Hi guys, this is Rakesh Talreja. As you might have noticed, few days back I have uploaded a short video regarding to the RFID sensors. Yes, guys. Now this is the complete video where we will talk about applications and detailed phenomena of this RFID uh, uh, radio frequency identification. So right now I was at Radisson and I was just unlocking uh, the, uh, the door of my room and I thought that why not to make a video for the student. So yes, guys. Uh, there is RFID tag and there is the RFID reader. There are two the essential components. There are some internal important components which I am going to show you when I come to this smart board right now let's learn about these two things now this tag has a chip internally when i bring this tag closer to this particular reader this reader has sent electromagnetic radiation which is going to activate this chip now the chip has a data as i mentioned earlier also that data is the digital data which contains nothing but the code corresponding to your particular room number and that is the whole sole reason that when i come when i bring this tag closer to any other room it's not going to detect it's not going to unlock it because the data which is returned by the tag, it is sensed by the reader. Reader has an internal database and a control panel. Now, what is the role of the database? It is going to match the code sent by this tag with its particular room code. If it found to be valid like this, it's going to unlock. Otherwise, like that other room, it is going to deny it. Now, what is the role of this? How this database is connected to the uh, complete uh, management of the hotel? What is the tag? What is active tag? What is the passive tag? What are the different types of readers? And also, guys, if I talk about the range now, here the range is just few millimeters. Even if I try to unlock this, just one more second. If I try to unlock this even from a centimeter, right? see, guys, uh, can you bring this little closer? If I, you know, uh, since it even from few centimeters, it is not going to detect. So is the range of RFID like this always very small? No, not necessarily. If I talk about, you know, vehicle access management, the range can be even in meters. So let's also have a look into one of the application in vehicle access management. Then I will go straight to the studio and I'm going to explain in detail the entire phenomena. Stay tuned right now. Yes, RFID has essentially two important components. Number one is the RFID reader. Number two is the RFID tag. Yes, when the tag is brought closer to the reader, the reader transmits radio waves. That in turn is going to cause the flow of electrons in the tag's antenna and that in turn is going to activate the chip which is inside the tag's antenna. Now, what is this chip? Chip is essentially used to store the data in the digital form and what is that data? Uh, say for example, if it is the tag related to the hotel room that I have shown you, the, the chip will contain the digital data corresponding to the room information, the room number and whether I am a particular resident of the room or not, etc. If you talk about the RFID tags attached on vehicles, it will be containing the vehicle information, the owner of the vehicle, the complete details, the number, registration number, etc. Right. So basically that uh, the chip contains the digital data. Now, upon being activated, the chip is going to transmit back this digital data again in the form of radio wave and that is going to be received by the antenna of the reader right this process is usually known as a backscatter okay so the reader receives this backscatter uh, and for interpretation of this backscatter it is going to send the data to its control panel and database yes guys control panel is just you can call it as the brain of the entire rfid system the control panel has everything along with the database has every particular thing to verify every particular data to verify whether the code received whether the data received by the chip is authentic or not yes as i've already shown you in the video that when I take my particular tag to one particular room which is officially my room it gets activated okay because control panel authenticates it but if I take it the same tag okay to another reader of another room that is not allocated on my name and that particular card it does not open it yes guys so control panel actually takes care of, about the verification part whether the data is valid or not and if it found to be valid it opens the door otherwise it doesn't open as you have already just seen in the uh, previous video that we have considered okay now Right, right now, I've just shown you one particular application of RFID, which was related to, you know, hotel door, you know, hotel door, door locks, room locks, but there can be several other applications. Let me take you towards one such application now that is related to the entry and exit of the vehicles in, say, societies or offices or etc. Let's have a look. Yes, students, see, I'm just approaching the exit of the society. Maybe you are able to see in front uh, the park plus P symbol that is the RFID reader. And yes, and as I approach, see how much distant it is. It is several feet and the gate, the boom barrier automatically opened. Okay, and this is the reader. Let's have a closer look into it and then let's talk more about that. Yes, guys, this is the uh, specific RFID tag that has been attached to my car. And this tag uh, 
uh, obtained uh, the electromagnetic radiation from the reader it got activated it sent the information of my vehicle uh, to the reader and as you know reader is connected to the database it checked that whether this car number is registered to the society or not it found yes it is registered and hence eventually uh, it opened the boom barrier all right now let me take you towards my office where you will again find a boom barrier but that is not controlled by rfid technology it is manually operated yes when i take my car along the entry or the exit okay the guard will just see whether there is a baiju uh, sticker that i've got it is attached on the vehicle if yes then okay vehicle belongs to this premises and he's going to manually open up the boom barrier let's have a look into it this is the exit of the office and this doesn't have the rfid so the guard had to come manually he had to Press the switch and then the boom barrier opens. So see one more another added advantage of RFID. Not only this, another important application of RFID technology you will find in the fast tags. Yes, when you bring your vehicle attached with the fast tag closer to a toll plaza, the fast tag scanner or you can again call it as a reader is going to transmit the radio wave which is, which falls on the fast tag. Now again, the active uh, the antenna receives that radio waves and in turn it is going to activate the chip. That particular chip contains the details of your particular vehicle and also it requests for the deduction of the toll amount corresponding to that particular place. Yeah, but for this process, definitely your fast tag must be uh, associated with a uh, wallet something like paytm or etc all right now let us talk about some more details about the rfid tag yes this tag has two rather three important components they are number one the tags antenna number two is the chip and number three which you have not seen till now is the voltage multiplier circuit what is the role of the multiplier i'm just going to explain you it for a few minutes okay but before that let me tell you these tags are again of two kinds number one the active tags number two the passive tags the active tags are primarily battery powered yes they have an internal power source yes they rely on the internal power source so once the radio waves fall on the uh, tag okay it will use the internal power source to activate the chip okay and that chip again in turn returns the digital data and because they are battery powered they are still more costlier as compared to passive one but they have the added ad advantage of uh, you know having a higher range as compared to the passive tags okay also because they are battery powered okay periodically the battery needs to be recharged or sometimes replaced as well now if i talk about the other one that is the passive tags which you usually see the tag that i've shown you with respect to the door lock system is again a passive tag now passive tags do not have any internal power source how do they operate yes basically antenna receive the electromagnetic wave but again that could be of small magnitude right now the reader transmits the radio wave the tags antenna receives it how much of the strength does it repeat re receives all this is the things that you study in the first transmission equation in the antenna in the electromagnetic theory course there's an important topic that is known as the first transmission equation that relates the power received by any antenna as compared to what is the power transmitted by another transmitter right so uh, you know you can have a look into the first transmission equation as well okay so usually uh, you know the tags antenna receives uh, the waves which are of smaller amplitude and smaller power and there comes the role of voltage multiplier because that smaller power may not be sufficient to activate the chip okay so now there comes a role of an important circuit that you study in your analog circuit course important that you study in the diode uh, circuits and it is important for the gate examination as well you study voltage doubler voltage uh, tripler voltage quadrupler generally we call it as the voltage multiplier yes the voltage multiplier is going to take the input from the tags antenna and it is going to amplify it as per the need it can double it it can triple it it can make it four times it can make it 16 times etc okay and so that it has sufficient amount to power on the chip okay now what is this voltage multiplier in detail let's have a look because the important circuit related to gate and this is how again an important area as i told you first transmission equation important for gate another important area connected with this particular video theme is the voltage multiplier for a gate Chalte hai. let's have a little details about the voltage multiplier going to the studio all right guys now let me explain you this important circuit used in this technology is the voltage multiplier the circuit diagram that you are seeing here is basically a voltage quadrupler that is going to multiply the voltage by a factor of four but before we talk about the quad process let us break it into understanding a doubling process and even to explain you the voltage doubler first let me explain you some discrete important uh, circuits that is going to be used here yes anytime if you have gone through the diode circuits in the analog circuit uh, course you must have definitely gone through this clamper circuit this is basically a positive clamper circuit what is the role of this let us understand so i basically apply a sinusoidal ac input here let's say it is 20 sin omega t or you can use any particular amplitude a sin omega t as well now specifically refer to this negative cycle 
Yes, let me refer to this negative cycle because what is going to happen in the negative cycle, the negative comes here, positive comes here and that is going to make this diode forward bias and under the ideal condition it becomes conducting and once it becomes conducting it is going to charge the capacitor okay and eventually after taking its settling time the capacitor gets charged to 20 volts okay now if the capacitor is charged to a 20 volt i'm explaining you in quite brief here now if you look into the voltage at this particular node okay if you just apply the simple loop here the voltage loop here okay starting from here this is minus vi okay then minus of 20 right plus of v naught is equal to zero the loop closed so what is the value of v naught there the v naught is simply equal to the 20 plus vi or i can say that is going to be 20 plus 20 sign of omega t it just raises the dc level it raises the amplitude of the vi that is what it is i told you is a positive clamp and it adds a positive dc value to this given ac uh, waveform so if i have a look into the output waveform it is going to be something like this it is 20 plus 20 sine omega t and it ranges from 0 to 40 the amplitude could be something else also this is just an example for a reference now the first part i have explained you is a very simple clamper circuit the positive clamper circuit and the next part that is important to understand is the positive peak detector circuit okay now let's say the previous waveform obtained is the input to this particular circuit now was it what is positive peak detector Usko bhi samaj lete hai. so what i'm going to do here again is let us apply the waveform obtained what was that waveform 20 plus 20 sine omega t and now let us say this is the input corresponding to this clamp uh, this positive peak detector circuit okay now what is going to happen here immediately you see all the values of initially voltage are initially positive and hence from the initial state only the diode is going to act as in the forward as a forward bias and hence it's going to be conducting because it is going to be conducting the capacitor is going to be charged okay it is going to be charged up to the maximum level that is equal to what is the maximum amplitude of the input this is going to be charged up to 40 volts it is going to be charged up to the 40 volts okay now let us assume the state where capacitor is charged up to the 40 volts okay so here you have already obtained 40 volts okay now okay when do you obtain the 40 volt when this waveform reached the peak okay but this is a sinusoidal waveform so now the amplitude starts decreasing now as soon as this amplitude okay the maximum here was 40 okay now it may become you know 35 30 etc it is falling okay now on the other side of the diode on the negative side of the diode you have 40 and but on the positive side you have voltages which is less than 40 so effectively this diode will now be always in the reverse bias because this is fixed at 40 this was charged to 40 and this is something below 40 so this is always in reverse bias and it is not going to conduct anymore and then the final value that is going to be seen here as the output is equal to 40 which is in sense which is in sense double of 20 okay double of the amplitude of the input waveform applied okay now what i'm going to do this i'm just going to take this clamper circuit and this positive peak detector connect them in the cascade and this is the circuit okay this is the output waveform it is raises to 40 and then the output voltage remains at the 40 and yes if i take the cascade connection in a sense for these two circuits this is what becomes a voltage doubler for you because the output that you saw here this output was equal to 20 plus 20 sine omega t 20 sine omega t and the positive peak detector detected the positive peak so what is the positive peak 20 plus 20 because the maximum value of sine theta is 1 and this particular capacitor was eventually charged to 40 which is like which is like you know 2 vp stay here stay here this is equal to 20 sine omega t and let us say let us say that 20 corresponds to the peak value of the input amplitude which is in general vp so what do you get here is vp and this is hence a voltage doubler circuit okay which has converted this ac waveform to a corresponding doubled dc output okay this particular uh, you know output is fed to the chip of the tags antenna okay that i was explaining you okay right now if I extend this philosophy and talk about the voltage, voltage quadruplers, how the voltage can be even made four times. Okay, so this is the circuit diagram, but let me have a rearrangement of this circuit and show you a simpler form of this. Okay, and have a look into this equivalent circuit. Okay, where I have again broken it into two 
full sections of the voltage doubler type of circuit okay so let us start again from this input node and again let us assume the same values that is the input being 20 sine omega t and the first path that you are able to feel is again the positive clamper circuit now once you receive the negative half of this negative half here this diode will again become forward bias as explained earlier and this is going to conduct and that makes the capacitor c1 charged again to a level of 20 volts and hence the voltage here like explained earlier is going to be 20 plus again you apply this loop now minus vi minus 20 equal to v naught okay sorry plus v naught equal to zero so v naught is vi plus 20 that is 20 plus 20 sine omega t okay now this goes to the positive peak detector again okay this diode d2 and c2 combination makes the positive peak detector and yes this is initially discharged 20 plus 20 sine omega t is always positive side it ranges from 0 to 40 as you already know okay and this diode is again always forward biased and this is going to create a conducting part due to which the c2 will charge up to what level 20 plus 20 40 here it is zero so difference is 40 minus zero this will be charged to a level of 40 volts okay now this particular waveform that is 20 plus 20 sine omega t goes to the input of this next combination of capacitor diode which is again like a clamper circuit you can assume right but the voltage at this node this time it is 40 okay and what is this waveform it is oscillating if i have a, a detailed version of this let's go thoda se detail mein draw kare. as seen earlier also this is oscillating between 40 and 20 so what is the minima of this zero and what is the voltage here difference what is the voltage here 40 okay this is always below 40 it is between 0 to 40 this is 40 so diode d3 okay is always in the forward bias and again it creates a conducting path due to which the c3 will charge c3 will charge how much 40 and the difference the minimum here is zero so this is going to be charged up to the level of sorry this one this is going to be charged up to a level of 40 minus 0 volts and hence it is again 40 volts. So what is the voltage at this node that you are going to see? Again, if you apply the loop, again, if you apply the loop minus VI, okay, minus of VI, minus of 20, okay, plus is this side. So if I'm coming from this side, minus 20 and here this is minus 40, okay, plus let's say this is V3, let's say this is V3, so plus V3 equal to 0. Okay, so what is the value of V3? It is equal to 20 plus 40 plus VI, that is 60 plus VI, or this time what you are getting is 60 plus 20 sine omega T. Okay, 60 plus 20 sine omega T. If I draw the waveform corresponding to the V3 specifically, corresponding to V3, okay, it is 60 plus 20. Okay, so plus 20 sine theta. So 60 plus 20, 80, and 60 minus 20, 40. It is going to oscillate somewhere between the 40 and the 80 okay between the 40 and the 80 all right now look into this side of the capacitor okay it is at 40 okay this is always above 40 okay and that is why this is between 40 to 80 so okay so positive terminal here is again above 40 so this diode is again forward bias which is going to create the conducting path and hence this capacitor c4 will be charged charged up to what level the difference you see here this is 80 this side it is 40 so this will be charged up to 80 minus 40 and hence this will be charged to 40 volt and then if you start applying the loop from here okay from this ground this is negative side so minus 40 come here sir this is 80 minus 40 40 so if you're coming from negative side minus 40 plus this v out plus the v out sir equal to 0 so what is the v out it is equal to 80 which is 4 times 20 or I can call it as 4 VP okay I can call it as 4 PP 4 VP and hence this is what is a voltage quadrupler circuit all right so hope you have understood this and similarly you know connecting uh, several such sections you can you know make the voltage 8 times 16 times you can design any voltage multiplier I've given you for reference two examples a voltage doubler and a voltage quad rupler all right let me once again repeat that the output of this you know voltage multiplier is going to be fed to the chip to activate the chip okay this dc output goes to the chip which activates the chip and again the chip starts doing its data yes it doing its own job yes it has the digital data stored it will transmit okay via the antenna in the form of radio waves which is going to be received by receiver uh, the reader as we have already learned right 
Okay, so now let me also give you some idea about the frequency range used in the RFID uh, systems. Yes, if we talk in general about the radio wave, the radio wave spectrum broadly ranges from 3 kilohertz to somewhere 300 gigahertz. Yes, but what are the practical frequencies allocated and used in the RFID systems? It is categorized into three parts. Number one is the LF range, the low frequency range. The primary frequency range here is 125 kilohertz up to the 134 kilohertz and the, the range of detection here is somewhere up to 10 centimeters restricted up to 10 centimeters if i talk about the next that is the high frequency hf range the primary frequency range here is 13.56 megahertz the range of the system restricted to uh, around 30 centimeters and if i talk about the third case that is the uhf ultra high frequency range where the primary frequency range is 433 megahertz and one more spectrum is 860 to 960 megahertz okay now depending on the frequency the range varies yes guys the range is higher if the frequency goes higher if i talk about the rfid door locks which i have shown you in the first part of the video the primary frequency range used there is the hf frequency range operating at 13.56 megahertz yes the reader and tag connection is at the 13.56 megahertz at the same time if i talk about the uh, you know the uh, ve vehicle entry and exit that i have shown you with respect to the society there primarily uhf range is used and not only in this particular society in, uh, in every society in every offices now the primary frequency used in this vehicle management is the 433 megahertz and corresponding to this higher frequency the range is again higher as you just saw that you know when i take the car okay the reader was able to detect the tag from several several feet as you have already seen in the uh, previous part of the video all right so in this video of sunday special learn with fun you have learned some important facts and important terminology with respect to rfid technology i have explained you what a tag is what a reader is, what are their components, what is the role of antennas here, what is the role of chip here and also very important component with respect to your gate syllabus is the voltage multiplier. If I talk specifically with respect to gate, what are the parts that is directly connected with your syllabus? Number one, as I'm mentioning you again, voltage multiplier. Number two, okay, the power relations between the transmitter and receiver that you study in antenna in the form of first transmission equation and number three, fundamentals of radio waves. Okay, so these are all what directly connected to your competitive exam. Okay, but the essence of video you see guys you will all study this in detail once you study the courses of electromagnetic voltage multiply your study when you study the course of analog but the intent of the video is once again let me tell you okay to impart some knowledge in you at the same time motivate you okay yes guys yaar, agar hum bhi technical padh lenge, thoda achche se, so we are able to understand you know how the things around us how engineering is everywhere around us and yes if we also become a good and a sharp engineer we'll be also sometime working in this system placed in several you know good mnc's or good psu's so the intent is more or less to motivate you to prepare towards the technical and excel in the gate examination okay so guys this is Rakesh Raja signing off but a very small and important request at the end as I mentioned in the last Sunday video also that we need your comments yes the efforts we are making how is it really motivating you how much do you like the video how much do you gain from this video please mention in the comment box so that we read and analyze and if you're really liking it we'll be increasing the frequency of such videos right now every sunday you get one such video known as learn with fun if you really liked it also press the like button show your uh, real attendance and also if you want more such videos without any miss do not forget to subscribe to the baiju's exam prep youtube channel immediately so that you don't miss any content because not only this recorded videos also live sessions guidance sessions everything is going on in this session everything that you need with respect to your gate or engineering preparation thank you bye bye take care and stay safe